So I was rewatching something yesterday, and I've said I like Michael Jordan more now than ever. I like him more during the last dance. I think he's a man's man. He doesn't back down from anything. What he said he meant. Uh, he, he's very true to his word. He doesn't worry about social media uh, preening or posturing or positioning uh, or validation. I like it. Everybody else is worried about that. He's not. Um, and Michael Jordan is one of the five best basketball players I've ever seen play. Uh, in order, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Magic uh, Johnson, Kobe Bryant, and Larry Bird are the best basketball players I've ever seen. I do not count centers. Why would I count the least skilled position on the floor? It's not about titles. I I don't rank these guys based on titles. I'm just telling you what my eyes have seen. Michael's the best player. LeBron's a very close second. Magic a close third. Kobe fourth. And Larry Bird fifth. Um, Centers generally aren't great ball handlers. They're not great shooters. They're not great passers. Although Arvido Sabonis and Bill Walton were. And I am totally comfortable saying that basketball has moved away from centers, and I like it. Thankfully, it's moved away from centers. One of the things I like about the last dance, the least interesting people are centers. Basketball and no sport should be controlled. Rules should not help the least skilled people. Should football be dominated by offensive linemen? Should baseball be dominated by a DH Should hockey be dominated by defensemen and fighters? No. I think one of the smartest things the NFL ever did was go back and erase the no-catch rule because the most skilled football players in America often are wide receivers. And the NFL said, you know what? (laughs) We want to make rules so wide receivers can score more touchdowns. And I think it was brilliant, and I think the game is much more enjoyable. The NBA did the same thing. Our most skilled people are ball handlers and shooters. Let's take out the hand check. They took out the hand check 16 years ago. Eight of the last 16 years, guards have won the MVP. In that stretch, zero centers have won the MVP. Dirk Nowitzki's not a center. Stop it. Kevin Durant lies about his heart height. He says he's shorter than he is. He doesn't want to be seen as a center. So I think leagues are really smart When they craft rules to elevate the most skilled and they craft rules to punish the least skilled. I think the NFL's done a brilliant job and the NBA has never been faster. There's never been more great shooters. There's never been more great ball handlers. There's never been more great passers. I love getting rid of the hand check. I didn't like the New York Knicks and their mythology where three of the five guys couldn't shoot a jumper uh, from here to the window. That's not good basketball. One of the reasons I like the NBA and the NFL going forward, they figured it out. Create rules to elevate your most skilled athletes. In my life, a center's never been the best passer in the league, has never been the best shooter in the league, has never been the best ball handler in the league. And my five favorite players and last dance has cemented this. All non-centers. I'm not saying you shouldn't be able to use a genetic gift if you're seven foot two. I'm not saying it. But the new NBA, the messaging is, hey, big fella, you better learn to shoot or you'll be coming off the bench and use sparingly. Uh, so Nick uh, Wright, my buddy, co-host First Things First, sponsored by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. So let me start with this. You heard me rant about centers. I'm not anti-center, but I'm pro-skill. And the NBA has decided with their rule changes, it's a guard-driven, wing-driven league. And so the five best players I've ever seen, I know Kareem, all the points, but I don't think he was as skilled as Michael Jordan or or Kobe or certainly LeBron or Magic or Larry Bird. So your takeaway on on my kind of rant that comes off as sort of anti-center. Well, if you don't have Kareem in your top five, you're just wrong. I mean, it's, it's just it's just an invalid opinion. It's just it's just like coming out today and say today is a great Thursday in the herd. It's just wrong. It's Wednesday. <laughs> Listen, there are three people who have a credible case for greatest player ever, and unlike the Jordan sycophants, I can concede. Obviously, Michael Jordan has a credible case for the greatest player ever. They can't concede. Anyone else does. LeBron James obviously is a credible case for the greatest player ever. He is the best case as it happened. And Kareem, who has more points than anybody, 
more MVPs than anybody, won the same amount of titles as Jordan. And by the way, I should remind you, it, it, his basketball life might be the most perfect. Never lost in high school, lost twice in college by a combined two points, won three uh, Final Four MVPs and three uh, National Players of the Year, and by year two was the best player in the entire NBA. And so in one league MVP and finals MVP. So those are your three best players ever. Your whole skill versus not skilled, I, it's just bad opinion. I love you. It's just a wrong opinion, though. <laughs> okay, let's segue to this. Um, a lot of people are saying with the last dance, Doc, uh, that Jordan, uh, you know, can you imagine him now in this cotton candy soft love tap pillow fight league he'd average 45 points a game do you buy that well it's insanity and the thing is this it cannot go only in one direction if you are arguing that michael jordan who let's break it down fully jordan averaged more than 35 once in his career the 1987 season where he averaged, I'm sorry, the 19, yeah, 87 season where he averaged 37 a game. People say, well, if he played at today's pace, fact of the matter, the 1987 season was played at a faster pace than today's NBA. Look it up. The 80s were a higher scoring decade than today's NBA. So what we're really, but we're really not talking about the year he averaged 35 or the year he averaged 37 because he wasn't winning titles. He was getting swept out of the playoffs or knocked out in the first round. We're talking about in the 90s when he averaged 31-32 and won titles, that that Jordan could now average 40-45 points. Well, you must therefore also be saying that Dominique Wilkins, who averaged 29 when Jordan averaged 31, would be averaging 40-41 points, and you've got to do it in the other direction. If today's era is so much easier to score in than a guy like, oh, I don't know, Kevin Durant, if he went back to 1992, would be lucky to crack 20 points per game. That's the conversion. If we're going to add 50% to Jordan's points per game, to do it retro retrofit it, you got to take 33% away from Durant's points per game. But no one wants to do this. But, Colin, here's the most fascinating thing. I thought with the Jordan doc, there would be some young people throwing stones at the era. I mean, we saw Michael Jordan on camera in the 98 season say, Ten years ago, guys were smoking cigarettes at halftime. I thought there'd be more people being like, oh, that's interesting. Wonder how that would hold up. That hasn't happened. Instead, what's happened is the folks of Jordan's era have thrown stones at the current era. Because when you say he could average 40 or 45, what you're saying is today's guys stink. They're not as good as his era because nobody today, aside from Harden, averages even 35. And so... I, I, Jordan would be great in any era, yeah. but the idea that he would he would be the best player in today's era by a couple standard deviations falls upon against any scrutiny. Uh, also should be noted the mid-range jumper uh, is not in vogue, and he would probably shoot more threes, uh, which is easier scoring for veteran players, and Michael was never a gifted three-point shooter except for the two years or a year they moved in the arc. So to your point, I do agree. Um, let me talk about a couple of football topics. Um, number one, I have never been a huge fan of Cam Newton, though I do acknowledge he was magical in his MVP season and sort of the emotional style of which he it's it's sort of his DNA was really beneficial. Uh, he plays with a great deal of momentum and energy, and it was magic. Uh, my knock on him is that he is not easy to coach, doesn't win enough, mechanically doesn't appear to be the same thrower he was five years ago, and he's banged up and out of his prime, I believe. And frankly, not accurate enough in now an accurate quarterback league where you've got to be in the 60-65 percentile. Um, I, don't have a, I never thought he had much of a market. Because I think he's a celebrity and nobody wants a celebrity backup. Uh, are you bothered by the fact that nobody appears to be even remotely interested in Cam Newton? Well, I just want people to acknowledge and admit that it can't just be about football if Cam Newton can't get a job. Because here, when people say, well, he's not consistent. Okay, it's a fair point. Joe Flacco was remarkably consistent for six years after they won the Super Bowl. He was consistently terrible <laughs> all six years. 
And guess what? Denver traded for him, even though he was making upwards of $18 million per year. All right, well, then with Cam, it's not about consistency. It's about health. And he's been inconsistent health-wise. You know who was very consistent health-wise? Sam Bradford. He was consistently always injured. Yet, despite that, Philly gave him a deal. Minnesota traded for the deal. Then Arizona gave him another deal. You know a guy who played eight good games in his career? Case Keenum. John Elway, come on down. Hey, Nick Foles, you played six magical quarters. $88 million from Jackson Mill in the <laughs> Chicago trades for him. So it, when it comes to Cam, what I wish folks would acknowledge is for a lot of the decision makers in the NFL, Phillip Rivers and his inconsistency and in interceptions that go along with showing players up on the field and screaming at coaches, it's a little more palatable when the post-game ridiculous outfit is a bolo tie. For Cam, <laughs> when the post-game outfit is something that I happen to think is super fly, but you wouldn't be caught dead in Colin Coward. He, he all of a sudden, for some guys, it's like, ah, eh, I don't know if that works. So it, until we get to a place where we have 32 consistently healthy quarterbacks, there should be a place for Cam Newton. Yeah, that's why I've said uh, Cam's a celebrity. Nobody wants a celebrity backup. I don't think it's just health. I think that's a nonsense argument. And I don't think it's just consistency. Uh, I think he's a celebrity. And uh, this it's got what got... It, that's why nobody wants Baker Mayfield eventually as a backup. That's why nobody wanted Johnny... Oh. I, think the, I think when you're a celebrity in this league and Cam is a big star, you either build around him or you're not interested. So let's move to the next topic. Um, you have a relationship with Aaron Rodgers. He slid into your DMs once or something like that. Oh uh, I, I, I do not. Yeah. Uh, but slid into my DMs. <laughs> Joy, explain to Colin the implication of that. At, during he, the he knows break, it. Please. That's why he says okay. it like that. All right, go ahead. Colin. <laughs> okay, I am lit. I just don't let you guys know it. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. um, I, my argument is, if the Packers drafted Jordan Love, but the next draft pick was a wide receiver. This would be fine because then they could go to him and say, listen, this is what we did with you. We're finding the next you, even though we may never play him. But we went and got a receiver, a blocking tight end, three interior offensive linemen. We are going to help. We, we helped you. We drafted all offensive guys. But when they drafted Jordan Love in a running back and never addressed wide receiver, I think it's going to fall flat for Aaron and there will be some bitterness throughout the course of the season? Or do you believe Nick Wright in your relationship with him? He'll handle it like a politician and say all the right stuff. Oh, I think he'll handle it well because he's a pro, but you're spot on. It's not just they drafted a running back. They didn't even draft like a cool receiving back like my soon-to-be two-time defending Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs did. They drafted a bruising power back yep. that pro football focus did not have in their top 250 <laughs> players in the draft. That's what they spent their second round pick on. And their first round pick they picked, they spent on a guy who they pray doesn't play a snap until 2022. And so if you're Rod and you, they traded up for him. If you're Rodgers, I think you justifiably should be more than missed at the draft. And then I, I will reiterate the point I made last week. I would be uh, moved from more than missed to downright irate that somebody was whispering sweet nothings in Bob McGinn's ear to where they talk about me like I'm a problem. I, I've used this quote before. Bill James is one of his smartest ones. The bad teams have a horrible habit of blaming their best players for their biggest problems. We've seen this happen to Odell Beckham. We see it happen to guys all the time. The one great player on a team gets blamed for the team not being greater or good. The Packers were 13-3 and three last year despite a rookie head coach and a defense that fell apart by the end of the season. And, and all of a sudden, Aaron Rodgers' attitude is the problem. Look at that throw. Look at what he did to my beloved Kansas City Chiefs. It's an impossible throw he made. Look at that. He handed it to him there. Yeah, that guy's the problem that you need to rush out of town. <laughs> it's insanity. Uh, by the way, let's circle back to basketball in the last dance. Uh, I don't have a problem with Michael Jordan uh, being critical of Jerry Krause, who has passed away, because Michael was critical of him when he played. And now he's critical of him when he's gone. He was critical of Isaiah when they battled. 
He's critical of him now. He's authentic. He's not softening his stance. And I think sports writers tend to like happy endings and nice, cuddly stories. And Michael will not oblige anybody. So I don't have a problem, Michael, going after Jerry Krause because he did it to his face when he was around. What do you make of that criticism of MJ? uh, Listen, I don't have a problem with it either in that regard. I understand that when people immediately after people pass away, it's not the time to say this is what they were terrible at. But at some point, once you have enough of expansive history, you, if Jerry Krause had passed away last week, then I would think, okay, this is poor form. But that obviously isn't the case. So you can give your honest opinion on him. But, and while Jerry Krause did seem to really want credit for what Michael and Scotty and Phil did and seemed to really always be looking for ways to kind of create wedges within the team. Yeah. What cannot be forgotten to history is Jerry Krause found Scotty Pippen, got Horace Grant, acquired Dennis Rodman, waited three years for Tony, Tony Kukoc, got Steve Kerr, John Paxton. He built an amazing team, that, a team that the first year Jordan was gone was good enough to win 54 games. So, listen, the guy might have not been as likable. He might have had some personality quirks, all of it. But he did a really underrated job at filling out the rest of that roster. Because when Jordan was first winning MVPs and when when he's scoring 35 and then 37 points per game, those teams weren't winning. And you needed that supporting cast. But to your overall point, I do think it's, it's fair to say it's not like Jordan waited for him to be gone That's to, right. to trash him. He did it at his damn Hall of Fame speech. He's always – now, we want to talk about how petty Michael Jordan is. <laughs> we don't have enough time. So <laughs> I, we'll do that another day. But in general, I agree with you, Colin. Nick Wright. Excellent work, my friend. Great talking to you. First things first. Good see you. I'll be listening to you on Absolutely. radio today. All right. I'm curious to see who slides into your DMs later, Colin. <laughs> Thank you.